Hi guys, it's uh, Gile here from uh, BJEE.com and I would like to make a quick video regarding um, the topic at the moment that, we, that we've been hearing. It's uh, should beginners uh, be allowed to spar? You know, so uh, today I was looking at a video, a recent video from uh, Henner and Hiron Gracie where they were talking about um, uh, how from I think 2002 they made some changes like from 2002 they, they've been in charge of the Gracie Academy and uh, they had made some changes to the way uh, to the way they were teaching for beginners so what they said is that <clears throat> they had changed the, the curriculum they made it more structured and they changed also the rule of sparring for beginners and they also changed uh, the, the blue belt test okay so I found it quite interesting because I mean I'm, I myself I'm um, I'm an academy you know instructor I'm an owner of an academy here in Serbia and um, uh, for me it was in interesting to know uh, their opinion on uh, if beginners should be able should be allowed to spar okay because you know of course uh, the majority of the BJ community uh, we've sparred we've all sparred from either the first day we ever started jujitsu or on the second or third day. It's like it was like it's like second nature to us, you know. You, you train jujitsu, you need to spar. So for them, what they were saying is that they had made some research about uh, why was there such a f big fallout rate of of uh, jujitsu um, uh, practitioners at white belt. So they were wondering, you know, like okay, they, they had a great tradition in the Gracie Academy in Torrance, you know, they had been existing for something like 15 years. And why was why did it, uh, why did they not have that many students who continued to blue belt? So what they found is that a lot of them is because uh, they they started sparring too early. So that when they were sparring too early, they were you know getting injured, or uh, they, they you know they had a, they, had, they were just scared. So like you know they, they were like thrown into the fire. And you know I guess not not many of them are are warriors. Let's say you know, like when I say when I mean warriors like. You know, you, you, you throw him into the fire and he's like, you know, he wants more. So, what they did is that they modified that. Um, they, I guess it was case per case, but mostly uh, the, uh, the beginners were only allowed to spar after they had completed a certain program. I'm not sure what, it, what their program is called, but uh, uh, after they had completed that program, then they would be allowed to spar. And, of course, from then on, they could spar for whenever they wanted, you know. But uh, the, Gracie, the Gracie brothers just wanted them... To, to have the basics, you know, uh, to, to have a, a knowledge of the basics without having to spar first, okay? And so I guess this is kind of a controversial topic uh, in Jiu-Jitsu because, <clears throat> like I said, the, the majority of the community is sparred from day one, okay? And I guess that's like the Grace Academy's way of doing things, you know, that's, that's the way I, I respect their way of doing things, you know? Some people think maybe it's a sellout or whatever, I mean... There is like pros and cons to that. Uh, this also is similar, something similar in one way to what uh, Higan Machado is doing. Higan Machado, he has a lot of celebrity, um, celebrity clients who train jujitsu. So, like for example, Ashton Kutcher, Kutcher, and uh, you know other famous people. So, what he made is a, a special, a special system of jujitsu where people don't have to spar. They just learn, they just drill the techniques and all that without having to spar. So Higan actually told me. Personally, he told me that he doesn't grade them in jiu-jitsu. He doesn't actually give them belts until they, you know, uh, if they follow the system. So they, they need to be f to actually roll to follow the system. At the, at the Gracie Academy, uh, they have something different. Like uh, for Gracie University, is that they have like a, a Gracie Technical Blue Belt and a Gracie, um, I think it's called a Gracie, uh, like, like a normal Gracie Blue Belt. So someone who doesn't spar or someone who's, who follows the Gracie University curriculum online can only attend, uh, can only uh, get to the um, a technical blue belt. So they actually need to to go in for it, to be evaluated by a, by a Gracie Academy instructor anywhere in the world to be able to receive a blue belt, okay? So all this goes back to what we're saying. I mean, should should beginners be allowed to spar or not okay I'll, I'll just tell you my opinion okay so I have an academy here and okay I'm, I'm based in Eastern Europe like like I said in my last video people here are tough and uh, you know they're, they're they're used to like you know tough trainings and all that but you know 
just like here in, in, in Eastern, Eastern Europe, it's like just anywhere else, you know. Just because some people are tough doesn't mean that the whole majority of people are tough, you know. I get a lot of people who come into my academy and I wouldn't call them tough. I, I guess they're a bit shy, they're scared, you know, they have low self-confidence. These are like like regular people. And for them, um, when they when they come in, it's like a, it's like a daunting experience, you know. You, 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 you meet new people, you've never met them before. People um, show techniques which can can actually kill you, you know. So for them, it's like a, a new experience. And after that, you know, the first lesson, you tell them, okay, you go with this guy, go spar with that, that guy, the big guy over there, you know. So like that can be too much to handle for some people. So, <clears throat> so what I do personally, I take it case per case. Okay, I, I see like I evaluate. First of all, asking me, have you ever trained some martial arts before, or have you trained any other sports before? And from then, I can see. Uh, how much experience or how much like sports or combat sport experience they have and also I talk to them if I see they're a bit like shy you know uh, low self-confidence I'll just take it really slowly with them you know um, I don't have the I, I have training six times a week only so like everyday training but like once a day so I don't have the liberty to have a, a beginners class so what I do is I um, I separate the class in two I, I put like the intermediate and advanced in one group and beginners. So when I say beginners, are like people with less than one month. So like every month, I get like I don't know, six to seven to eight new people. Who, uh, and uh, but those new people, they there it goes from like people with no experience at all in jujitsu or grappling to people who have trained a little bit before. So like I said, you know, like I, I'm just gonna um, take them to the basics, teach them self defense first, uh, and what what happens? I teach them like um, jujitsu against the regular folk you know so like somebody who doesn't like against someone who doesn't know jujitsu something for the street self-defense and in in my opinion that's great you know but like uh nowadays now we're in 2015 so i mean uh, a lot of people actually do know jujitsu so if ever you want to one day fight against you know in the in the mma or fight in jujitsu i mean if you just learn jujitsu against an unskilled uh, if you just learn jujitsu against an unskilled attacker your jiu-jitsu will be very limited, you know, it just be like uh, just basic jiu-jitsu. So, like what happens in my academy is that we, the, after after a few months where they learn the, the basic self-defense stuff, you know, they, they go towards learning like what I call sport jiu-jitsu. Okay, so it's like how, learning how to learning how to beat another jiu-jitsu player or, or, or an MMA fighter with jiu-jitsu. You know, so like I said, you know, um, we want jiu-jitsu for, to be for everybody. So not everybody's a warrior, not everybody's gonna come to your academy and like you know be ready to spar from day one and like he, he likes being smashed and comes in and comes back, yeah, let's let's do that some more. Some people it'll be too much for them. So I guess I, I, I guess it depends, you know. So we gotta take it case per case, evaluate each each beginner and if if uh, if they if they wanna spar from day one, okay, but just you know don't they don't have to spar right away. Just teach them the basics first, teach them the guard, teach them how to pass a guard. Teach them how to, how to defend uh, a close guard, and then you know go slowly, because at the end of the day we, we don't want to, we don't want them to get injured, you know, because they don't know what they're doing, and uh, they, they they just pass out. So sparring is very important for jiu-jitsu, but we have to take it. Uh, we, have to, uh, we have to be careful with our beginners. You know we don't want them to to go too fast. You know and and the ones who are you know psychologically a bit more fragile, we have to just take it really really slow with them. So maybe. Don't spar for the first two weeks. Don't spar for the first three weeks until you learn really the basics. But just evaluate each person, okay? So that's that's my opinion, you know. And um, that's it. All right, guys. If you have any more questions, send them over, and uh, we can discuss all of that either on the on the site or on the Facebook page, or just send me here. I'll make a video about it. All right. Take care. Bye.